Hello indie game fans, City Builders spanned historical, modern day, fantasy and even sci-fi entries and was one of the genres that I grew up with since games like Zoo Tycoon and Pharaoh shaped my childhood. So here's a look at upcoming titles, including one which is the third most wishlisted game on Steam. So let's begin with Dungeon Tycoon, a game that is pretty much Dungeon Keeper in all but name, but has you designing dungeons that are just challenging enough to attract adventurers but does not straight up kill them. So there's a theme park kind of vibe to this game. We have a very short teaser for Siege of Erdor, being a game set in dark medieval times in which you have to fend off the armies of darkness at night and kind of looks like Helm's Deep the game. This video is brought to you by Preserve, a relaxing nature building game in which you are transforming the natural landscape and creating a flourishing ecosystem by placing down animals and plants which need to be in harmony. It follows a lineage of relaxing city builders and has a similar kind of pleasant vibe due to the visuals and music, as well as the theme of restoring the natural balance rather than the introduction of very human structures like houses or windmills that encroach upon nature. There will be various biomes in the game each with their own unique set of challenges and interestingly allows you to build vertically as well as horizontally. This will have three game modes in harmony which is the default, a puzzle mode that starts you off with a set number of cards and you need to figure out the solution as well as a creative sandbox mode with no limitations. The developers have released a demo on Steam today so go play that and wishlist the game if interested. I've been following this developer on Twitter for a little while and this video is the time to show off Folklands, a city builder title that has you managing a medieval village, ensuring that your people have enough resources to survive. It is a self-styled peaceful city builder, but there are hazards like fires or crime that you need to deal with, but disasters are optional and can be turned off. Or, if you want even more of a challenge, you can switch to conflict mode as well. Among the many influences of this game is the Settlers series, so if you loved those games, do keep an eye on this. This next title might stray into cozy game territory, which admittedly does have some crossover with this genre, in which wood and weather is a self-styled god game but set in a wooden toy city, which adds to the cozy vibes. You play as an ethereal blue hen which can come down into the town and walk around like a character in which you're able to control the weather to influence the world. I'm not sure what the objective of this game is, if it is simply change the weather and watch what happens, or if there's more to the game but it looks neat so do check it out. This next title might be not so indie since interestingly enough, Art of the Real comes to us from developer Rocketworks who are best known for the survival game Icarus and was founded by one Dean Hall who is the creator of DayZ. So while technically independent, this team, I suspect, has funding that goes way beyond what a normal indie team has access to. This game is of course a transport tycoon game like Real Road Tycoon in which the objective is to create profitable transportation networks and has a pleasant art style. Okay, there might be a little bit of controversy with this game since the developers seem to have a habit of throwing up many Steam pages before deciding on which project to work on next, which I suppose is one way of doing market research of making the game with the most amount of hype or wishlists behind it, but that does leave many possibly abandoned games on Steam, which is not great. But anyway, apparently Orc War Chief is going to be a real game. This has you leading a band of orcs as you gather the horde and fight for your survival, having to go on raids as well as to fight humans along with building out your settlement and even spinning up the war machine. So unleash your inner thrall in this game. If we have orcs, we of course must have dwarves as well, in which King of the Dwarves is the latest in the dwarven city builder subgenre that has you building an underground city. 
The excavation mechanics look interesting and thus allow for the city to be built in 3D, although I don't know how in-depth they will get with the physics, whether you require support columns and such to prevent cave-ins. There is, of course, a combat element as well to fight off invaders and monsters and looks like another promising title. Our first sci-fi entry is Stellar Settlers, a colony sim set on alien planets in which you need to build and expand your settlement while keeping the settlers alive and happy. It's a little bit more constrained in terms of city building, so you're not exactly constructing massive bases, but rather very sci-fi looking settlements with interconnected pods that do have verticality to them. There are five hostile planets to play on, with the objective being to construct a spaceship to escape and we'll be releasing next week, so keep an eye out. Our first historical title is Polismos, a game set in the ancient Greek world in which you're building up multiple cities and managing an empire. It is about meeting the needs of your people, of manufacturing and trading resources, about making policies and maybe even dominating other cities. But I don't see a combat or military element to the game, so it should be more on the economic end of things. I thought that Beyond These Stars looked familiar, and lo and behold, this comes to us from Balancing Monkey Games who made Before We Leave, another hex-based city builder in which you are leading a bunch of peeps who emerge from underground to create societies on a number of happy planets in the solar system, and where this new game is a continuation of that universe, but where you're now building on the back of a space whale instead. For the most part, it is regular city builder stuff like taking advantage of the resources and terrain available to you, but there's also the whale itself to consider in which you need to be mindful of the fragility of the ecosystem that can change on a dime. As you travel through space, you learn more about the history of the universe and the creature that you're living on and even has alien species to encounter and based on the first game should be a decent entry. I covered the Kickstarter of Fata Deum way back when, in which this is a self-styled god game that has to be drawing upon games like Populous and Black and White. You don't, however, have a giant animal avatar in the world, but rather are able to influence the world and the people within. It's indirect control, so you cannot issue commands directly, but are able to wield your influence over the mortals in order to get the desired outcome. You as a deity are not alone however, so there is competition with other gods in which the god who amasses the most followers has the most power. You can be kind and benevolent or cruel and violent with the trait then manifesting in your people having a campaign mode to play through and looks kind of fable-esque as well. This next title releases at the end of the month, in which Bulwark Falconeer Chronicles is from the developer of The Falconeer, an aerial combat title in which you were mounted on top of a giant bird, with this game looking to be set in the same universe but is a sandbox builder instead. You are able to create massive cities in an almost townscaper kind of way, but these are towers, spires and fortresses which will attract inhabitants and eventually become hubs for trade as civilization is rebuilt. It's an open world game and there are combat elements so you can see naval ships, airships and the aforementioned mounted flying birds and creatures battling over these cities but I'm not quite sure what the structure or objective of the game is. Oh, you're finally awake. We're counting on you to build the greatest wizard school. If you do your job well, I am certain that the wisdom will come to us. This next title was just revealed recently, and while Wisdom Academy only has a cinematic trailer at the moment, this is a Magic Academy builder that looks awesome in screenshots, and there always seems to be an appetite for this type of game. But remember, while magic brings light, it can also cast shadows onto the world. A Chinese mythology-themed title is Nanzhou the Divine Court, at least 
that's how I think it's pronounced, since I don't see any Chinese characters, and it does come to us from a Polish developer in which this game was formerly known as Builders of China, but the added mythological flair resulted in the name change and looks kind of awesome. Another sci-fi entry is City of Robots, a perhaps topical kind of game since you play as a super advanced AI and are taking control of said city of robots, building and expanding it while being the heart and brain of the city. Interestingly, the developers do talk about either researching and advancing technology for the humans or to prepare for war against them, which might not be as far-fetched a concept given the advances in AI these days. So maybe this will go from science fiction to science fact, in which the game looks awesome and appears to have a bunch of systems, although the user interface does seem difficult to pass. Among the different settings, medieval fantasy is my favourite since there's an old school charm to the world that adds in a dose of magic and monsters and it gets even more compelling with Fantastic Haven being a game with exactly this setting. It's a city builder title with a little bit of an environmentalist theme in which you are saving endangered fantasy creatures, building shelters and sanctuaries to keep them safe. I saw a depressing fact the other day in the depths of Wikipedia of how the northern white rhinoceros is functionally extinct in which conservation efforts in our world seems to be a losing battle so perhaps we can have a little bit of hope restored in games like this. This next title is of interest since Nova Roma comes to us from the developer of Kingdoms and Castles, one of my all-time favourite city builder games, but this time it is set in Rome where you need to appease the gods. The core gathering and production of resources remains, but where you can build very Roman things like aqueducts to transport water along with the Colosseum, plazas, marketplaces, chariot races and even a parliament building where it looks fantastic and given the pedigree is as much of a sure thing when it comes to potential. We cannot have a list like this without an ancient Egyptian themed title, with the game here being Dynasty of the Sands. You are establishing a dynasty across generations of spreading your influence across the river now, and it's a self described meditative city builder and looks perfect to be immersed in. The level of simulation here looks deep, including a day night cycle, weather, disease, and more, and of course, you need to appease the gods in this game as well possibly being the modern pharaoh game that we've all been waiting for. I'm actually surprised that there are not more zombie city builder titles in which infection free zone is exactly that, having you commanding a group of survivors as they fend off the undead hordes. Interestingly, the city layouts seem to be based on real life cities and while abstracted to some extent, we are still constructing fences, guard towers, farms and defences, creating choke points to effectively destroy the zombies, looking kind of like they are billions but more in the simulation rather than RTS direction. The sequel to Airborne Kingdom is titled Airborne Empire, in which their unique concept of building a flying city has only been copied in one other game if I'm remembering correctly, so there's still something unique to this game. This is a self-described open world RPG city builder, and if you're wondering how this can be open world, well, the city can fly and move so you are free to explore. The need to maintain balance and to ensure that you have enough lift is critical and this appears to add more combat elements with enemy planes trying to shoot your city out of the sky and looks awesome as a concept.
I've had my eye on this game for quite a while since Cataclysmo comes to us from Digital Sun, developer of the shopkeeping roguelite Moonlighter, but it's a whole other kind of game which makes it of note. It was successful on Kickstarter which gave them some extra runway to finish up the game, being described as Lego meets They Are Billions which doesn't seem too far off. You play as adventurers venturing into the mist to reclaim land for humanity, building up your fortress block by block so you have the necessary structures to fight off the monsters. Again, while the enemies are not as numerous as they are billions, the more micro scale of constructing the fortress looks awesome and challenging, with this having a release date in July to wishlist the game for now. I have been absolutely enthralled by Lesara Summit Kingdom since I first heard of it, since this is a city builder title that is set in the high mountains of the steep faces of the mountain at altitude which comes with its own set of challenges like avalanches to consider. It otherwise looks like quite a classic looking city builder but does play with elevation and verticality and has an awesome look as well. I've watched some documentaries of people living in the Himalayas and while the giant cities are a bit of a stretch, it still amazes me how ingenious humans are as a species to be able to live in a place like this, so of course I'm down for this game. I mentioned Pharaoh at the start, so of course I have to mention Synergy here since it's another city builder title but with a sci-fi theme and has an art style inspired by Mobius which has been used in other games like Sable. You're exploring this strange and hostile alien planet, although I don't think there are any enemies per se, but rather the environment itself is deadly so you need to find a way to survive, looking excellent and is of note. A title that mixes genres is Thrive Heavy Lies the Crown, one that has that medieval fantasy setting as well which includes dragons and monsters, in which you're building your medieval kingdom but also conquering your enemies in RTS style combat. This game looks epic in terms of scale, of gigantic villages, cities and castles that you can build, rounded out by the combat which sees massive armies facing off against each other. Again, Helm's Deep is invoked, so it's like a Lord of the Rings simulator in all but name, and where there's also a morality system here, since your cities will reflect how benevolent or cruel you are, and it's one of my most anticipated titles. Fans of the genre will not be surprised to see Manor Lords here, since this game, I kid you not, is number 3 in terms of having the most wishlists on Steam, just being behind Black Myth, Wukong and Hollow Knight Silksong, with the game having over 2 million Steam wishlists, which is quite the feat. They've been crushing it during demo releases and events like the Steam Mix Festival, in which this medieval strategy game with large scale tactical combat does look fantastic. You play as a medieval lord who has to rule over your own lands, tending to the peasants and calling the banners when necessary to march on your enemies. As such, it is pretty much Game of Thrones without magic and dragons, being more akin to historical medieval times in which managing the villages and resource production during peacetime will be critical to your success during war, with the epic battles of hundreds of units looking awesome and has a strategic weight since each soldier might otherwise be a farmer or blacksmith that will cripple your economy if they are killed, with this having a release date in April so do look forward to this. For more upcoming strategy games, watch this video to discover 20 titles.